Hi everyone. Okay, today for episode two, I've decided we're going to discuss action height or the height of your strings in relation to the frets of your neck and of course your pickups. So, to demonstrate with this particular guitar, which is a, if you can see it, which is a lovely Epiphone Wilshire with some modifications by myself. I put new pickups in this and did uh, rewired it and made it a lot better than it was in the first place. But hopefully you can see that this particular type of guitar has a very familiar looking Gibson style bridge and stop tail piece and a Justomatic I believe it's called. And these really are the easiest type of bridge to adjust. They are absolute child's pay play to adjust. Um, not only on this particular model, if you can see, I think need to get closer. On this particular model, not only have you got little thumb wheels either side of the bridge to raise and lower it, you've also got a little screwdriver point in the top there for a slotted screwdriver which makes it even easier to raise and lower that bridge. All very simple stuff if you know if you know what you're doing and how to do it. As I said yesterday these guitar repair places and luthiers and even the guitar manufacturers seem to want to make you believe that doing this kind of work is um, is really difficult and it's not it's simple it's simplicity itself it's um, not difficult you don't need to be afraid of it anything you do adjust on the the height of the of the bridge raising and lowering the, the, the height of the strings is reversible so if you do screw it up and you don't think you know what you've what you've what you've done wrong and you really need to take it to a guitar repair place then there won't be any there won't be any problem with that but I'm absolutely convinced that you'll find this easy. So what we need to achieve with the string height is a very comfortable height of string over the fretboard to make playing your guitar as easy as possible. Not so low that we get string buzz and not so high that it um, makes it very very difficult to, to fret your your chords or your notes you know you don't want you don't want five millimeters of of string height above the fret because it will bend your strings out of tune every time you fret a note you want it at the optimum height for playability now on this type of guitar and on Les Paul's any Gibson guitar, they tend to go off of the measurements taken from the 12th fret. Now, the, and the and the measurements from the 12th fret on the on the low E bass side will be 5 64ths at the 12th fret. So that means 5 64ths of gap from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. And on the high E side, once again at the 12th fret, it will be 3 64ths. Once again taken from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. I might see that I'm going on about the top of the fret, bottom of the string, but I just want to make it absolutely crystal clear that that's what we're talking about. So, with your guitar tuned to pitch, which this one isn't quite right, it's very close but not quite, but I'm not going to tune it. What we need to do is take our rule. Now this rule has I don't know if you can see that, but it's got millimeters on one side and it's got sixty-fourths and sixteenths on the other side. Now because I've watched so many instructional videos, read so many instructional books that all tend to be American because of the fact that Fender and Gibson guitars are all made in, well, mainly made in the USA. 
I always go from a, a, a 60 fourths measurement, which luckily for me this, this rule has. So, hopefully you'll be able to We'll be able to see. So if we're measuring from the 12th fret, that's the 12th fret right there. And so we're not putting a capo on the string, on the frets. We're not holding down the string at all on any of the frets. We're literally just taking the measurement as it is at that point on this guitar. So you make sure failing eyesight as you get older, it's not fun. You're putting your you can also get a much much better version of this kind of this kind of thing. Um Stumac sells them and um yeah Stumac is probably the main place. They're a much longer flatter measuring surface to lay down on your strings like that that also has the 64th measurements but as I had this rule I've always used this and I've never bothered buying anything else so, so why would you but you're using your rule and at the 12th fret you'll be measuring hopefully you can see that you'll be measuring to see what it says and if you have a look this is just about absolutely bang on four sixty fourths at the 12th and on the E on the high E side between 2 and 3 64ths now I know that this guitar doesn't have fret, fret buzz or rattle so I wouldn't adjust it from that because I've got this at the very very lowest I can get the strings without it having fret buzz and as long as you don't strike the strings too hard then you won't have any problems. But carrying on, if you did find that your measurement at the 12th fret was higher than 5 64ths, and bearing in mind that we also need to make sure that the action height of the nut is correct, and we'll be coming to that in a future video, and the relief in your neck is also set correctly, which we covered yesterday in the video. If that action still reads too high at that crucial 12 fret measurement on the base side, you take your little thumb wheel and you turn that clockwise and that will very, very slightly lower that bridge, very slightly lower it. Now, if your high E side it's fine, no need to touch that side of the bridge, just the base. Now once you've adjusted that, and for that kind of for that kind of difference, if we had a very, very small difference in the in the height from what from where we needed it to be, if it was only a very, very small incremental amount out, say for instance it was measuring something like six sixty fourths, you would only turn that thumb wheel a quarter of a turn clockwise by either using by either using that thumb wheel or by using a, f a flathead screwdriver in the slot no more than a quarter of a turn and then you would have put your guitar out of tune so you need to tune it once again back up to pitch and then you take your ruler or rule again on the 12th fret measuring it at that point don't press down the strings anywhere just the strings as they are, laying on the neck, measuring at that point. And hopefully then it will measure 5 64ths on the bass side and 3 64ths on the treble side. Now, I haven't got a Fender guitar up here in the loft today, but I have got a Fender neck, as you can see, nice Fender Stratocaster neck, and I also have a Fender Stratocaster style bridge. Now, Fender recommends that you measure 
the string action height at the 17th fret. Not sure why, but the, fen the Fender recommended heights at the 17th fret are 4 64ths, both low E and high E sides of the, of the fretboard strings. And a completely different system. Excuse the top of my head for a moment. A completely. There we go. A completely different design of bridge for a Fender Strat. All individually adjustable saddles for height and intonation. And these are a lot fiddlier than the uh, than the Gibson Adjustomatic bridges. As in each saddle, as you can see, hopefully, if the camera might focus on that, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so as you can see, each in uh, bloody cameras, each individual saddle has two little grub screws for adjusting the height. <coughs> so. Hopefully, one of these came with your your lovely new Stratocaster, and you would once again, using the method you just you just saw me use with the with the rule, you'd measure this time at the seventeenth. No pressing down of the strings anywhere; just straight measurement as the string lies at the seventeenth fret, measuring underneath measuring underneath from the top of the fret to the underside of the string. 464 sixty-fourths, and of course, if that's out, and of course your guitar will be tuned to pitch, your nut height, string height at the nut will have been adjusted already, and the relief in your neck is perfect. Ten thou, as we discussed yesterday. To raise or lower each individual bridge saddle, you take your little Allen key, placing it in the grub screws, which is quite fiddly. And to raise that up, that saddle height up, turn clockwise. And we're talking a quarter of a turn at a time. And that's on both grub screws, on both those little grub screws on each, on each saddle. They have, they have to be turned exactly the same amount on both sides. And what I tend to do once I've, once I've done an adjustment on both of those grub screws is I take the guitar and I look down the length of it and I look at the, I look, at, look to see whether that saddle looks straight, looks horizontal. Because you, you can quite easily tell whether you've overdone it on one grub screw and not, not enough on the other. You do not want a tilted saddle. You want the saddle to be nice and straight, horizontal, so the string sits nice in between those two grub screw posts so to raise that saddle up slightly is turn clockwise and to lower it down slightly is obviously turn anti-clockwise and you'll have to individually measure each each string at the 17th fret not like the les paul this time you've got to individually measure each string as you go across the fretboard each at the 17th and adjust and adjust each saddle accordingly until it looks just right. Measure each one with the rule at that fret at that point on the 17th. So it should be four sixty-fourths across all of those strings at the 17th fret. Okay, now you can look up what it is, what four sixty-fourths is in metric if you like, because obviously. We're English, or I'm English, and um, but I've always used sixty-fourths because it's just easier because everything seems to be written in sixty-fourths or eighths or sixteenths. But four sixty-fourths is very roughly two millimeters. But check that out online. Make sure that's right. If you if all you've got is a, a millimeter rule, then go with it. No need to go out and buy a, a sixty-fourths, you know, inch rule. You don't have to. You can use what you've got. What's the point of spending money you don't need to spend, eh? But yeah, so as I say, each of those bridges, each of those saddles, 
all individually got to be adjusted. And if you measure at the point just, to, just next to the string, so make sure the rule is right up against the side of the string so you don't get any odd measurements, any inaccurate measurements. Make sure the rule isn't tilted. You don't want it wonky over to one side, you want it absolutely dead straight. Drop it down gently onto that fret. Take your measurement, make sure you can just see the, the 464th little increment showing underneath that string and, you'll, and that'll be bang on. If not, adjust the way until you get it right. And there's no need to use radius gauges to get the radius of your strings right to your fretboard. That's another, that's another thing you don't need to purchase. If you're adjusting each individual saddle at that fret point and making sure all of them measure the 464ths so like we said, your strings will resemble the radius of the fretboard once you've finished anyway, just like that. It will look fantastic. No matter what, your, what the radius of your neck is, it will, it will emulate it because you're measuring it at that point and you're adjusting it to the height of that point. So wherever that fret is on that arc, where the string is, will be measured at that point on the fret. And so it will emulate a radius as you go across. So no need to waste your money on radius, radius gauges. Anyway, so I hope that helps. We'll have another video very soon discussing another topic. Hope that helped and that's all from me, so farewell.